San Diego Studios has broke the silence about franchise mode in MLB The Show 22. They finally added it to the feature premiere calendar and then did a deep dive on all the new improvements in the feature premiere. They even sat down with me to do a one-on-one interview with Nick Livingston to talk about the vision for the mode. Now, if you haven't watched that, you should definitely go watch it after this video so you can understand everything there is to know about the future of franchise mode and MLB The Show. Now, in this video, we're going to go over 11 new updates to MLB The Show 22 franchise mode. But before we do, please consider subscribing as I'll be covering all the news on the road to launch on April fit. All right, let's get into it. Number one, player metric 2.0. There's been logic updates to improve the foundation of the logic systems and franchise mode. San Diego Studios switched from looking at last year's performance to a three-year weighted war, along with age, potential, and team control. So even if players have wonky seasons or hit that 30-year mark, you're still going to see them valued pretty high. As long as over that three-year average, they've been performing pretty good. Now, ultimately, product owner Clayton said that he wanted to take less emphasis off of performance to the player metric to have it more balanced. Number two, trade metric 2.0. Trade logic improvements to refine the trade metric have ensured that rebuilding teams aren't putting players with long-term team control on the trade block. Now, playoff push teams are now looking to add prospects, relief pitchers, and closers. Teams will now also look to trade in ways that improve their positional strengths. World-class players will now be much harder to land as they'll be coveted and come with a premium in trade negotiations and relief pitchers and closers will now have less value when it comes to trade logic. In the example they gave, the Yankees traded two of their top prospects, Anthony Volpe and Jason Dominguez, for Juan Soto in his final contract year on the playoff push. Now that's a lot to give up just to get a player on loan. Now additionally, players no longer will be immediately traded after they sign to a new team in the offseason. And number three, budget improvements. The team budget is now based on a 40-man roster as it has previously was based on the total organization. Also, the CBT is now updated and team market sizes are now also updated to reflect the current trends. These changes add about five to seven million dollars in total budget for each team. Now, San Diego Studios ran multiple sims and with these changes, there now aren't good players just sitting in free agency, not being able to find a team anymore five, 10, 20 years into the future. This is gonna be huge because I always found that there are always positions like shortstop that were just overloaded with a lot of low low to mid 80 overall players that were maybe 30 to 34 years old that could just never find a team. Number four, contract improvements. The max contract term is now 15 years and the max AAV is now 35 million. Additionally, with that, player contract demands have now been improved because the player metric is based on a three-year weighted war, which will reward consistent performance. Relief pitcher contract fouls also now will be boosted. They'll be paid more accurately based on their performance. At number five, two-way player improvements. Two-way players will now be able to DH every day they don't pitch. Two-way players will be able to recover pitcher stamina when they don't pitch, even when they play DH and in the field. Pitchers who have secondary position can become two-way players and DH in your franchise if they're the best available hitter. I also think I heard you'll see prospects raise and drafted players that'll also be two-way players. At number six, off-season franchise improvements. Previously, there were some issues with players signing in the exclusive period. There were just too many players signing. Additionally, in the previous MLB The Shows, you'd see all these players sign big deals right out of the gate. Players will now only sign during the exclusive signing period if they have very high interest in re-signing with that team. There will be more free agents that test the market and don't sign immediately in that exclusive period. You're going to see a lot of high value players in December and even January that reflects what's actually happening in the MLB. Well, maybe not this year with the lockout, but before that. This is going to make the hot stove like a thing and really exciting. At number seven, and improve roster logic. Arbitration and renewable decisions are now based on the player metric, and as we know, that will be much improved. These logic changes will now improve CPU tendencies to keep players that have value to their organization. Additionally, value players are now more likely to be protected on the 40-man prior to the Rule 5 draft. That's not all. These logic improvements all help the 40-man roster construction, and one thing that I'm really excited about is that potential and age for the top 100 prospects are now 100% accurate. Coming at number 8, the MLB to single A roster is now completely real. Gone are the SCEA fictional players and developers. The out-of-box rosters will feature all real players from the MLB all the way down to the single A. Now this is a huge dub and something I'm really excited about. This means I can start
start my chais on day one right when the game comes out. At number nine, there's pitcher stamina improvements. Pitcher stamina will be accurately reflected in the postseason. So if you want to do a four man rotation or you have your ace pitch on short notice, like you can certainly do that. At number 10, there's an expanded transaction log. Now we talk about archiving in like historical data and franchise mode being so important. And the transaction log has now been expanded and stores four times more information than ever before. Now, once you get to the end of the season, you can see what happened at the beginning of the season and even before that in the off season. You really couldn't do that before. And at number 11, new injury sliders. There are now separate injury sliders for simulation and in game. So if you want to lower injuries when you sim, but then keep it on or boost it when you play your games, you can do that. Injuries sometimes become a real random problem that the game gives you when you're simulating. And so I think this is a good little added change. Lots of quality of life and foundational improvements to franchise mode that I'm looking forward to seeing when the game comes out on early access on April 1st. Now, if you're a little bit disappointed with all this, like I said, I encourage you to go watch my interview with Nick Livingston. He gives all the details on what the future of franchise mode in. It's a 26 minute interview where I think I got him to answer 15 tough, hard hitting questions. So make sure you go check that out. Now, let me know down in the comments what you think. And until the next one, we'll see you. Peace.